Hi everyone, welcome to another video with iLearn Engineering. My name is Leslie and today we're going to look at the OSI model. Um, what it what it is, what it means, what it does. Um, so the OSI model, and OSI stands for Open System Interconnection, it is a conceptual framework. It's a reference model. So it's not a physical tool or product or anything like that that we can use. It's a reference model for how applications communicate over a network. So that could be the network in your house, your school, your office, um, you know, any, any kind of network out there. And the model provides a visual design of how the different layers are connected, how they're built on top of each other, um, starting with visual, physical cabling. I can nearly speak today. Physical cabling right up to the application the, that we're communicating through. Um, so it allows developers and vendors to create products and software that can communicate with each other on a lot of different devices. It also allows vendors a way to describe how their product or tool fits into this model. So if we were buying um, some kind of product that helps us you know communicate over a network the vendor might say oh my product sits at the first and second layer or it sits at you know the the sixth and seventh layer or, or something like that um so it, it allows us a way to do to describe those things um and just so you know there are seven layers in the osi model just in case you were wondering um, so it allows it allows vendors to describe their product. It allows network engineers to actually communicate how networks work, um, how to you know what where a network problem might be occurring, um, how to fix it, things like that. So it, it gives them it gives them a, a really good way to describe the problems that the network might be having. Um, and in this framework, with these seven layers. Each layer will depend on the layer below it to provide information to it. And it will then serve the layer above it so it will provide information up the way. Um, and that's that's how it works. So if there is a message to so say, I am sending a message to someone. Um, so there is a flow of data down through the layers of my computer from the top layer right down to, to the bottom. So the data will flow down across the network and then it will get to the recipient's computer. So if I'm sending a message to you, it will come to your computer and then it will flow up. So from the bottom layer right up to to the top. Um, so only the very top layer doesn't provide services upwards and only the very bottom layer doesn't doesn't rely on a, a layer below it. It will rely on the data coming from another device, if you like. Um, so we'll talk about the different layers. I'm going to type them in because I don't think my drawing is, is good enough. Um, you'll probably be pleased to know. So the very top layer we have is the application layer and it is what we as the user works with. So if I'm using a web browser, I'm trying to send an email, send a message on Teams or, or WhatsApp or Slack or something like that. It's an application that I'm interacting with in some fashion. Um, and then underneath that, we have the presentation layer. And the presentation layer will translate any data for the application. It will um, you know, do any encryption, any decryption, anything like that 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 application needs. Um, then underneath that, we have the session layer. And what the session layer does is it sets up, it coordinates and it terminates any conversations between applications. So it will handle any authentication, um, you know, maybe logging in or something like that. It will handle any of that kind of authentication and any reconnection after interruptions. Excuse me. So if you're, say you're on a Teams call, you're in a, in a meeting and, uh, you know, I, I get this a lot where you're talking away and you're listening and everything's fine. And then all of a sudden you freeze and you get that dreaded message that says, hold on, we're trying to get you back into the meeting. Um, The session layer is responsible for reconnecting me 
to that meeting after an interruption in my in my network um, and what it also does is it determines how long the system will wait for an application to respond so it'll have a set time and once that time has passed then we'll just we'll just call it quits and move on basically um, and then we have a layer called the transport layer um, and the transport layer transfers data across the network so it will handle any error checking it will handle any data flow controls it determines how much data to send where to send it and at what rate to send it as well um, then underneath that we have the network layer and the network layer moves data into another network and then through it um, so it packages data up with the correct network address information um, so almost like you're addressing a parcel that you want to send to someone it puts the correct address on it it determines the best network routes and then it forwards the the package the the package data up through there um up through their their kind of network um up to the transport layer and then underneath that we have the data link layer or sometimes you might hear it hear it referred to as the protocol layer um just depends who you're who you're talking to and what they prefer to call it um so it handles moving data into and out of a physical link in the network um so it handles any bit transmission errors it will make sure the pace of the data flow doesn't overwhelm either the sending device or the receiving device so it just makes sure that the data is not flowing too fast um or or too slow and then underneath that we have the physical layer and the physical layer is transferring the data using electrical or mechanical interfaces so it basically determines how the bits are represented so if we're using um electrical cable or optical cables or radio waves if we're using wireless or something like that it determines how the bits are represented so what signals represent the bits um to to physically send from my computer to someone else's computer um and the data will flow let's use a nice pen so the data will flow up if it arrives at my device so if if you've sent a message to me the data will flow up from the physical layer right up to the application layer if i want to send a message to you or or communicate with your computer it will flow down so it'll come from the application layer all the way down to the physical layer across to your machine and then it will come up the different layers at, at your side and um, so the data flows up and down and the OSI model has a number of advantages as well as some disadvantages um, so like everything in life that's good and bad so the good is that it's a standard model in computer networking so it's something that everybody works to and that makes it a lot easier for all of our devices to communicate you know if you think about us not having a standard model and some vendors are using this and some vendors are using that and you're buying a device and you're maybe trying to communicate with your friend and you're thinking well their device uses this model so I'm going to have to try and get one that also uses the same model it would be a total nightmare so it's a lot better that way that we can we can all use the same the same kind of model um, it supports connectionless and connection oriented services so it supports wired and wireless um, depending on whether we want say connectionless services if we're needing you know faster data transmissions or um, we want connection oriented if we want reliability or something like that it supports both um, it can adapt to many different network protocols so a protocol is our method of communicating um, so it could be our language of communication if you like and the OSI model supports lots of different protocols which is good um, and it, it's quite adaptable and it's a lot more secure than having all of those um, services bundled in one layer so we've got the seven layers there that's more secure than having everything happen in one in one layer um, on the downside the session layer 
and the presentation layer, they're not as useful as some of the other layers. Um, so, you know, there are there are other versions of the OSI model where people have only got five layers. They've only they've only got the layers that are the most important or seen as the most important. Um, so that can be a bit of a downside. Um, some services are duplicated at certain layers as well. So if you think about what we said about the transport layer and the data link layer, some of the services that they do are duplicated, um, which some people can can see as a downside. But the biggest downside is the the layers can't work in parallel. So each layer has to wait to receive data from the previous layer. So the transport layer has to wait in the network layer, the network layer has to wait in the data link layer, it has to wait in the physical layer, and so on. So so that can be a bit of a downside as well. Um, but that is the OSI model in a nutshell. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in our next videos. Bye.